Hello and welcome to Gaffey's Grinds. My name is Mr. Gaffey and I'm a science teacher trying to help you understand some difficult concepts in junior cycle science. So in these short videos, I will be taking a difficult concept in junior cycle science, breaking it down, trying to help you understand it, and then doing some practice questions on the topic. So the subject of today, oh, so just sorry, quickly with some quick tips for using these videos. Um, with your mobile phone, if you're, watching it, if you're watching this video and your mobile phone is near you or it's on, I'd advise you to turn it off or put it in a different room. This is just so it doesn't act as a major distraction. Try not to have other tabs open on your tablet or your computer, whatever you're watching this video on. Again, it just serves as a major distraction if you get a notification and it means that you're not going to learn as well. And the most important thing, I'm going to be giving you questions and tasks to do during this video. It's really, really, really important that you do them because if you don't, you're basically not going to learn anything. Okay, so the topic of today's video is going to be fossil fuels. Okay, um, and particularly how are fossil fuels formed? Now, why is this an important topic? Well, fossil fuels in, for the last couple of hundred years have been the main way in which we generate electricity. So they've been a, re a really, really important resource for us. Now, this topic fits into our energy uh, module and we will be looking at different sources that we use to generate electricity. Today's is going to be on fossil fuels. So just as an overview, we have electricity, which is a really important resource. It's probably the most important way we use energy. Most important energy transfer is electrical working or electricity. And it can be generated by different sources. Okay. These sources can either be renewable or they could be non-renewable. Now, if we zoom in on this word, renewable, re, new, able, it's made up of three words. We all know what it means to make a new version of something. It basically means to start again with a new substance or a new object. So start with a new one uh, to replenish it, basically. Able means you can do it. And re kind of, in this case, means to remake. So can you remake new ones? Are you able to remake new ones? So renewable fuels obviously are ones then that you can easily, can easily be, I'm gonna use this word replenished. Replenished, and that means like restocked or recreated. Okay, so if, you, if you're drinking, if it's a hot day and you're drinking water and you run out of water, you empty your glass, by refilling it, you replenish your water, okay? So you, you basically get more of it. So renewable are sources that can be easily replenished. Non-renewable then, these are going to be the opposite, okay? These are going to be sources which cannot be easily replaced. And we're going to be looking at the reasons why they cannot be easily replaced, but it's got to do with how long they take to make. Okay, so sources of non-renewable and non-renewable sources, examples are fossil fuels. Fossil fuels, and that's what we're going to be looking at more closely today. Examples of fossil fuels are coal, oil, gas, and in Ireland, we have a fourth one that we use quite regularly, or that we used to use, it's starting to run out now. It's peat, also called turf peat. Another non-renewable energy resource, and we will be looking at this more in detail later on, is nuclear fuel. Nuclear fuel is a non-renewable source of creating electricity. Now, renewable fuels, these are things like wind, 
hydroelectric. And again, that's made of two words, hydro and electric. So electric meaning electricity, hydro meaning using water. So we're using water to generate electricity. And another big one is solar. Solar. So these are renewable sources. Okay, what I'm going to ask you to do now is take a good look at this diagram. Look it over, really study it. And I'm going to flip this over now. And what I want you guys to do is I want you to pause your video and try and recreate that diagram from memory into somewhere where you take your notes or your notes copy, wherever it is that you take stuff down in your class. Okay, so just try and do that from memory now. Pause the video. Don't play the video again until you've had a good go at it. Do it in pencil so that um, if you make a mistake, you can fix it. Okay, so pause your video now. Okay, you should only be watching this video now if you've had a full go at drawing that diagram, recreating that diagram from memory. I'm going to flip this back over now so you can compare your diagram and add anything that you didn't have or fix any mistakes that you did. Okay. All right, so now you have... Okay, apologies about that. Somebody came into the room and I had to stop. But um, now you know about the different sources that we generate electricity from, and you know that some are renewable and some are non renewable. You know what that means now? Non renewable. What does it mean? Shout out the answer now. And renewable. What does it mean? Shout out the answer now. Okay, and we know some examples. Today we're going to be looking at these ones fossil fuels. How are fossil fuels created? Okay, well, as a quick recap, we already know that wood is an example of a fuel. When we burn wood, we can transfer energy to the surroundings. So wood is storing energy. Okay, now, it's an example of a fuel. Fuels are substances which contain a lot of energy. And the energy can be released when we burn them. Okay. So energy is being stored in the fuel. If you know what store the energy is in in the, in the wood, I want you to shout out the answer now. If you said chemical store, well done. Now, when we light the wood on fire, we can transfer the energy to different places, to the surroundings. So if you were sitting here, you would feel the energy. If you know what type of transfer this is, I want you to shout out the answer now. Okay. If you said heating, well done. It's energy is transferred by heating. So we now know that the wood is storing energy. How much energy? Well, let's say the wood is storing 100 joules of energy. Okay. Well, where did this 100 joules come from? Where does energy come from? Well, to answer that question, we have to answer the question, where did the wood come from? Well, wood comes from a tree. So we all know what the tree looks like. Tree looks like that. Okay, and the block of wood is basically this here. Okay, so here's your block of wood that we were just burning and it comes from a tree. Now if the tree, if the block of wood was storing 100 joules of energy, then the whole tree must be storing much more. Maybe we'll just call it 1000 joules of energy. So now we know where the energy in the wood comes from. It comes from a tree. Well, how did the tree get the energy? Well, again, we have to push it back one step further. The tree was not always this great big tree. One time, it started life as a small little plant. Like that. And obviously, over time, it had to grow into that big tree. So how does it do this? Well, to do this, it takes energy from the sun. So energy transfers from the sun to the plant. If you know what energy transfer is involved in transferring energy from the sun to the earth and then to the plant, 
shout out the answer now. If you said radiation, well done. Okay, so energy is transferred to the plant. Now it doesn't just turn into a big tree overnight. This takes many, many, many years. So what's happening is every day, the plant takes in some of this energy and starts to store it. And when it stores it, it makes more cells and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And over time, some trees take 15 years to get big. Some trees take 70, 80 years to get big. But over time, it stores enough energy that it gets so much bigger like this. It turns into a tree. So it grows. And why am I telling you all this? Well, it's about what happens when this tree dies. So it's taken many, many years for that tree to turn into an adult plant. All the time it's storing energy. But one day the tree will die and it will fall to the ground like this. Why is this important? Well, the tree is still storing the energy. 1,000 joules is still in that tree. Now sometimes, actually most of the time, what will happen to this tree is that it will be eaten. It will be eaten by bugs, it will be eaten by wood lice, it will be eaten by bacteria, little microorganisms. And why are they feeding on it? Well, they need energy too. So they can feed off the tree and they can take the energy for themselves. So most of the time, that's going to happen. We call this decomposing. Decomposing. And that word is made up of de and composing. So composing means if you compose something, you build it or you make it. And de basically means destruct or break, uh, do the opposite. So decomposing means opposite. I suppose D means opposite. So you're doing opposite of building. So you're breaking it down. So microorganisms and all to break down the tree and you just end up basically with little pieces of sawdust of what's left of the tree. But sometimes this won't happen because the tree will get covered over by leaves, bits of dirt, bits of soil and gets covered over and it doesn't get decayed. Okay, now, if, you if, this happens, if this happens over a long enough time, what will happen is you get more layers building up. So more leaves and more soil fall down. And thousands of years later, more year leaves and more soil will fall down. And it starts to get grass grown on top then. You get grass grown on top and then the grass dies and you get another layer. And over time, you get these layers and layers and layers of soil and dirt and um, leaves and dead, maybe a dead animal or two. And you build up these layers of soil on top. But what's still underneath? The tree is still underneath and it's still storing the thousand joules of energy because nothing has decomposed it or eaten it. Now, I want you to imagine you were this tree. What would it feel like? Well, there would be a lot of weight pushing down on you. You're pushing and pushing and pushing and squeezing you. We call this compressing. Compressing. When things are compressed, they get squashed. So all this weight of this soil building up is squashing the tree. And over millions of years of squashing, pressure and heat, the tree stops to look like a tree. And because it's getting squashed so much, it gets squashed into smaller smaller pieces than the tree. Okay. And this stuff starts to look like a black sooty rock. And if you were to grab a piece of this and lift it up, your hand will get all black soot. But it's the same stuff. It's still the tree. It's just been squashed so much. It's now in a different form. And this black rock we call, sorry, we call coal. So this is how coal is formed. It's formed when trees die, woody plants, and over millions of years, they're squashed by soil and clay and grass and dead plants and animals that, grow, that fall on top of it. They squash it and compress it down into a smaller space. Again, why is this important? Well, this coal is still storing that 1,000 joules of energy. Now this happened over millions of years and this coal lay here undisturbed for millions and millions of years until one day humans discovered it. They discovered that if you dig down, you can find this stuff called coal and you can build a tunnel down 
and then you can dig out the coal and take it out of the mine. So this is a coal mine now. So humans dug out the coal and then they started to burn it again. The reason why it's so good at burning is it's still got all this massive amount of energy that was once in that tree. So this is an, coal is an example of a fossil fuel. It is formed when woody plants get squashed and compressed over time. Uh, so they die, they don't get decomposed, they get squashed and compressed over time and all that energy is still stored up inside them. You can take that coal out and burn them. Now, this was the start of something called the Industrial Revolution, when the coal was taken from the ground. And for the first time, we didn't need that big, long tree anymore. So that, what used to be that big tree, which would be impossible to burn all at one time because it's so big, that 1,000 joules would be very hard to get because you'd have to burn the whole tree in one go. And you know yourself, if you try and fit a whole tree in a fire, it's not going to happen. But the tree, when it was squashed down, made a much smaller amount of coal but still had all the energy. So you could take the coal, put it in a fire, and get all the energy out in one go. This allowed them to put this into things like engines. They were able to create an engine that were able to burn coal in, heat water, which turned it to steam, and make things move then, okay? Like the steam engine. And um, So that was the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. So coal is an example of a fossil fuel. It, makes, uh, it comes from woody plants, then slimy plants and stuff like algae, uh, that grows in, in water and stuff like that, they make uh, natural gas and oil when they die and they get compressed. Okay, now again, why are they called fossil fuels? Well, because they're formed from fossils, which are just the remains of dead plants and animals. Okay, you should now be able to explain how coal is produced, but as some practice, we're going to do some questions on this now. So I'm going to put some questions up on the screen for you to practice. Okay, now, if you're working from the booklet that, uh, that goes with this chapter, if you're in my class, these are the numbers of the questions in the booklet. Okay, these numbers are 56 to 61. So you can mark from your booklet or you can mark from the screen here. If you're not in my class, then you can still work from these numbers, um, but you do it in your practice copy or, or a copy where you do your exercises, where you do your... Uh, questions for homework or whatever okay so what I want you to do now is I want you to pause the video and try these questions this is really important that you do these questions otherwise you're not going to learn half as much okay so I'm going to get you to pause the video and don't play it again until you've tried all the questions question 61 needs you to use a formula which we've learned already if you weren't in my class and you're not sure what this form this formula is it's power multiplied by time equals energy transferred. Power multiplied by time equals energy transferred. Okay, so you have to figure out power. That was the formula, you need to use that and work out the power. So pause the video now, now try those questions please. Okay, now you should only be watching this video if you've had a go at doing all them questions. Okay, I'm now gonna put the answers up and we'll go through them, okay, um, but Again, like I said, make sure you've tried the questions, otherwise you're not gonna learn as much from this, okay? So here are the answers for 56 to 60. Okay. Well done if you got those right. So how are fossil fuels formed? Or where do the fossil fuels come from is 56. They are formed from the remains of dead plants and animals. 57, how do humans release the energy from fossil fuels? We burn them. 58, which store is a so energy store is associated with fossil fuels before we use them? It's the chemical energy store. 59, how long do fossil fuels take to form? Many millions of years. And question 60, which energy transfers are involved when a person uses a wood fire for warmth? Which energy transfers are involved? Well, the, question, the answer is heating. Heating is the energy transfer involved. Okay, now... If you don't have any of those right, it's a good idea now to write them down. If there's anything you don't understand, if that none of, some of those answers don't make sense to you, then I advise you to go back and watch the explanation again and then come back and do the questions again. Now for, quest, for the last question, 61, I am gonna do it on the board here, okay? So we use the method that I've showed you to, to, work, uh, to use any formula, it's called DESQ. 
D-E-S-C-U, and it works like this. D, this line, is where we put our data, data from the question, okay? So the data are numbers we get from the question. So what information do we have? We know that a fire releases 14,500 uh, 14, joules. So E, energy released, or energy transferred, sorry, energy transferred, equals 14,500 joules. The time equals 30 seconds. And the power equals question mark. We don't know this, that's what we're trying to find. The formula, which I told you in my class you should know this, is power multiplied by time equals energy transferred. So for those not in my class, this E here stands for the equation. Which equation do I need? S stands for substitute. So this is where we take numbers, where we know them, and we put them in instead of words. So here I see that time is here and time is here. Time is equal to 30 seconds. So I'm going to put the number 30 in instead of time on the next line. Energy transferred is equal to 14,500 joules. So I'm going to put that in instead of the word energy transfer. Power, I don't have a number for, so I'm going to leave it as a word. Power multiplied by 30 equals 14,500. Okay, now this is power multiplied by 30. I don't want 30 times the power. I just want to know what one of the power is, one power. So to make this a one, get rid of the 30 here, I divide it by itself. 30 divided by 30 is equal to one. But this is an equal sign, so I cannot do this to one side and not to the other because both sides here are equal. So if I change it, I have to change it in the same way on both sides. So if I divide it here by 30, I must also divide here by 30. So now I have a sum, power equals 14,500 divided by 30 or over 30. Next line is the calculate line. So use your calculator for this because you're allowed to. So why wouldn't you? So 14,500 uh, divided by 30. I get power equals 483.3. Okay, so power equals 483.3. And power is measured in watts. So U stands for unit. So watts. Okay, if you got all of those right, well done. You can now explain how fossil fuels were formed. Thank you for tuning in. In the next video, we're going to be looking at how power fossil fuels are then used in power plants to generate electricity. We'll also be looking at the advantages and disadvantages of using fossil fuels in this way. We'll see you in the next one.